Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mint flips, where I'm a full-time eBay reseller and every 100 subscribers there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe so you have a chance to win. I've got six orders going out today and I had one that I had to ship out yesterday that I'll just include because Monday was President's Day so it threw off my shipping. So instead of shipping three times this week, I tried to adjust it to just ship twice, but one of them I still had to put out yesterday. Uh, first thing going out, though, is a B3A. It is a vintage Tupperware Servalier in red. It's one of the smaller round ones. Always look out for the Servalier. It's some of the better stuff for Tupperware. The lid alone, $8.99, free shipping. Next up's the big one of the day. This, this one, all the resellers watching, non-resellers even. These are the ones where you go, oh, Big brain. Um, I'm, I'm the man. I'm the best. I'm, I'm good at this. That's, that's these. It's the types of things that keep you going. It is vintage Chanel number 22. This was an estate find that I paid 25 cents for. I priced it up high and I took an offer $75 free shipping. 25 cents into about $70 after shipping. That's Oh, that's the stuff right there. I took, because I priced it $125 free shipping, and I took $75, so that's, that's $50 off. God, my brain was frazzled there for too long. That was easy math. But what I did is the, we actually went back and forth. They offered $50, I counted with $100, they came back with $75, and I almost counted with $100 again, but then I went, and I do this a lot on my higher dollar items, or things that have been listed for a long time. I went back and I searched current listings compared to mine. There was one exactly like mine that was half full, but then there was two that were the four ounce, because this is the two ounce. There was the two that were the four ounce. The one was full, and I think they were asking 200 bucks or something like that, but there was a four ounce one that was half full that was $60 plus shipping or somewhere in that range. So, you know, easy math. Half of four is two, so $75 free shipping was actually a fair offer. So I said, okie dokie, let's go ahead. Next up on A4 is a Pyrex Corningware A9C. One, two, three, four. A9C. A9C. It's this one right here. It's a square one. I don't know why I was looking at the oval ones. And we'll double check to see if it's fluted. Nope, that is the correct one right there. A9C Pyrex, $7.99 plus shipping. Next up, B3A is a vintage Tupperware modular, something, what's the number on these ones again? Uh, one, I'll have to use this because my, my eyes are terrible. 1616 on that one. So luckily I pulled out the broken one in the moment I realized it was broken because this buyer could have desired two and then I would have been screwed. <laughs> I would have had to either cancel the order or I would have had to drop ship them a second one. It just would have been bad. So I'm glad in the moment I said, oh, this is actually broken. Let's pull it out of the store now. Next up, B3A is a open hearth Farberware heating element support. Right there, that little tiny piece of metal. And that is $12.99 free shipping. Next up is on A4. It's a Sonoma Home Goods salt and pepper shaker. It's this cute little bear and moose with, uh, they're sitting on a log. And for that, I got $12.99 plus shipping. And this I just got last week and I paid, I think four bucks for it, but the sales history looked good enough. Four bucks into $13 is, is cool beans. And then the last thing that I, like I said, I already shipped it out is I did sell one of these. I sold an orange one. They paid full price, $11.99 free shipping. And after fee, cause in the moment I was like, okay, let's see how much these are gonna make me. If they pay full price after fees and shipping, profit on those, and I'm talking profit on those, is about $7 each. And I have 50 of them now. You can do the math on how much profit that is. Sorry, 
let me correct myself, $6 profit. But still, six times 50, pretty easy math to see how much pure profit I make, I'm making on plastic Lego containers. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so happy. And it was so easy to do the listing. I, it's another one of those, just list things. I don't know. Difficulty should not be a factor unless it's difficult enough that you're not going to list it. That should be the only, then don't buy it or get rid of it. Unload it. I did finally, and again, why did I wait? I finally dismantled this other Farberware thing and filled in the, the listings, which took seconds because of course it was already mostly ready to pack up. So, you know, the heating element, the plug, the this little support thingy the the grease tray all of those i just had to go into my other listings and add a quantity and move where they were located on the shelf and then the rest of the unit i just had to take the four screws out for the legs put those in a ziploc like i store the other ones and then this becomes recycling or you know i might put it on marketplace for a scrapper a metal scrapper if they want to pick it off off my porch for free who knows mostly because I don't want it in my recycling pile because it's big, but this is what you end up with when you part them out because these parts are not worth uh, reselling. It's just too much work. If you're missing this, I mean, you basically don't have one. So why would somebody want to buy that? I did the math to make, sh to make sure it was the right move. By selling the parts individually, it was an additional $40 in profit. It takes up less space, easier to ship, less time, all, all the, the perks plus an additional $40 of money. And that's without it having all the rotisserie parts. Because with the rotisserie ones, you get a motor, a rotisserie rod, the uprights for the rotisserie. I think that's the only difference is, but, and that would have made it an additional $50 on top of that. Because the rod, 30 bucks, the motor, 25, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, the uprights, $9.99 free shipping, somewhere in that range, but you know, another 50 ish bucks. So I will never sell one of those whole again. I will part them out. And, and that is, I, I keep saying it, but you know, it's because I'm excited. I'm going to find those. It's easy to do it this way. It's going to be something that's in my store, probably permanently. I think there's an option where you can leave multi-quantity listings with a quantity of zero up. I got, I know I've heard, because now that I'm, I'm watching them right now, Dom and Don, Don and Dom, hit it backwards. I've heard Don, the auction professor, say multiple times that he does it. And I don't know if it's because he has an anchor store that he's allowed to. I'm going to look into that because that's an item that, that would interest me, to leave the listings in my store at a quantity of zero so that when I find them, it's a, a simple click, add a quantity. Because if not, I had to go back to my sold for ones I didn't have any remaining and sell similar, but I was saving the same pictures. It still was not that big of a deal. But if it goes over the 90 day threshold, I would have to make a new listing and I'd like to avoid that. Now I came to a bit of a realization, uh, I think two days ago, I went out sourcing a little bit just because I, I had done a good amount of work for the day and I kind of just wanted to give myself a break and maybe find a couple things. I found some books. I went to all three of my resale shops and I found, I don't know, 15 books and five of them were for myself. So so not, not really good there. There was some decent profit, but that's neither here nor there. The realization was that I actually am low on back stock, I'm almost out of things to list. I have an infinite supply of books that can't be, I can't list 100% of books. I'm not a bookstore. That's not how my business model works. I have a lot of records. I'm leaning towards, now that I've cherry picked out the four or five new records, I'm leaning towards, it's not gonna be worth the time and effort to list every record individually, mostly because a lot of them aren't in great shape and I'm having to clean each one. And some of them, the records are in the wrong sleeve. So that's also an issue. So I can't trust that it's on. I got, I do have to sort through all of them. There's a decent quantity that's like uh, religious, even selling those in lots, you're getting maybe 50 cents a piece, not great money there. So those ones I'll probably just pull out and donate 
because I mean, unless I don't know, maybe if I got 50 of them, I put them up 25 foot shipping. Maybe, I don't know, probably not worth the effort. So I am actually running low on things to list. And I'm, I'm not saying that's a problem. I will go source and I will find stuff and I have avenues to, to get things, but it's just not a feeling I, I enjoy. And I, I, I think it was maybe because my storage unit was just a little more cluttered than, than I'd like it to be. So it appeared like I had a lot of stuff, but then when I went out there and started organizing and moving stuff around a little bit, I started looking around and I go, okay, I'm getting pretty close to running out of things to list. That is probably my Monday. I'll probably pull orders. Actually, I'll probably do that at the end of the day. So I'll probably first thing in the morning, head off to another town, not my own, because I live in, in my area, it's a bigger town, but it's surrounded by very little, I'm the, I'm the, the big little town, you know, like my town has a Walmart, so we're a big town, but all the towns around me don't even have a grocery store, that kind of thing. They have like a gas station grocery store combo. So I'm going to go probably, probably, you know, a, a hour drive away and hit up the, the thrift stores in that area. And then, uh, hopefully that goes well. I'm not going to, I'm not, that's the, I guess that's the point of all this is I'm not going to go into panic emergency mode and start buying junk. I've seen a lot of people, they feel the pressure like, oh, I got to have stuff. I got to get more stuff. Sometimes you don't just wait till the things come to you, find a new place to source, expand where you source, how you source, learn a new a uh, niche so that you can, when you go sourcing, find some better stuff, all those kinds of things. But that panic mode should never exist because you end up buying junk. You end up buying junk that doesn't sell, you end up tying up your dollars, all the above. So that's my my Monday plan. But the other thing that Don and Dom were mentioning in their in their stream was because I assume, but I feel very confident that recession is on the horizon. And so what happens during recessions is people don't have that much money, especially the, the Joe Schmo, the me, the regular guy. So the things in your store, and this is what they were talking about, you should focus as much as possible on not things people need, but things people want. Because the things people need, sometimes they can't afford during that type of time, but the things people want, collectibles, antiques, vintage, those are the disposable income people. So even if, if the markets go up and down or there's a recession or any of these types of things, those type of people, that's fun money for them anyway. So those types of things still get bought during those times, maybe for a cheaper price, but it doesn't just go to zero. Whereas when you're buying things that you need, that th those type of items are less likely to sell during a downturn. I know it's a bit of a gloom and doom type of scenario, but I mean, it's it's things are not great global economics wise. It's it's very very bad, and it's holding on by the skin of its teeth. It I mean, yes, sometimes you know European markets will be down or up, Chinese, U.S you know, North America, South America, they fluctuate. But when they are so intertwined as they are right now, and all of them are struggling at the same time, it, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. So just, just, to, just thoughts I'm having. I need to make sure the stuff I'm sourcing, people are going to buy no matter what the market is. And I need to start sourcing some stuff. So I'm actually excited about it. Cause I, that's the part I love. I love, I love shopping for stuff, but just, you know, I'm here to share the good, the bad, the in-between, my thoughts, and hopefully get some of your thoughts back. So go ahead, leave me any comments on any of the things I've talked about, because I tend to ramble and I'm alone, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm here by myself. It's not, I'm talking to nobody. So when I'm talking to you, I do appreciate when you guys answer back, drop comments, tell me I'm crazy. Tell me the, the markets are, are perfectly fine and all this is just, you know, a bunch of baloney or are you feeling the same way? Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other.